As a freelance filmmaker, editor, things go in waves. Sometimes I have more filming work, sometimes I'm editing more, and recently it's been a lot of editing. I've been sitting here doing different projects that I filmed over the past few months, one of those being the documentary project that I've been telling you guys about. I can't quite show anything yet, but there's something that came to my mind that I do and I don't know if everybody does. It's just the best workflow for going through an hour and a half of interviews. For these documentaries, we're typically doing multiple interviews. In this specific episode's case, I did five different interviews. I want to make sure that I do a few things to keep them separated and also while I'm watching them through to pull the points that are good, great, excellent, or absolutely nothing at all. We're in premiere now and I know that this is probably overwhelming, but let me explain. First things first is you see the color sections. So you got blue here, green, tan, you got a blue, another tan, and then yellow. The reason that there's multiple tans, and it's blurred out because I can't show it yet, but you can see the gist. Right here, there's two people. And so the tan ones is where the mom was talking whenever she was sitting next to her sister, and the chunk of tan is whenever it was just her mom. I wasn't really anticipating having the aunt come into frame, but she just kept bringing up these good points, and I was like, come here. You guys are going to be more comfortable when you're together. Let's get you guys together, tell stories, reminisce on old times, and it ended up being so good. And so Right here, you see the tan sections are the mom, the blue sections are the ant talking, but this frame is gonna stay the same. We got the orange yellow sections as the trainer, green is for grandma, and then blue is the player. Clearly, the biggest section is the blue part, and that was the player, and he's gonna be guiding most of the story. The story's about him. So that interview is definitely the longest, and that's the one that we're gonna get the most out of. We also see things on different layers. We have five different layers where the interview is sectioned off from. The reason I have that is because we organize it from bad to great. The bottom layer here is going to be all of the parts of the interview that are irrelevant. Maybe it's me asking a question. There's no audio where the person's talking. Or it could be just dead time. It, it could be a part where he stumbles and I'm like, okay, he's going to restart what he's saying. So let's ignore the fact that he was even saying anything at all. And then video line two are the okay parts, the parts that he might be saying something, but I can't really envision myself using it. But we do know that there's something usable there. The third line is pretty good. And those are the cases where you might be able to use this to help guide your story. It's nothing that is too hard hitting, but it's definitely a great soundbite where in the right context, it could be used. But in my case, I'm probably only using about half of these parts that are on line three. Line four is very good. I want to use these sound bites and I'm going to find a way to use them and usually tying them into another part of the video because at the end of the day, we do want something that the player is saying to tie into what the coach is saying and the parents are saying because then that helps really bring the story home. And let's say for this case, they're talking about the player and how good of a person he is. You have the coach talk about his work ethic and how he is hardworking and very soft-spoken. And then you'll have the parents tell a story about whenever he was younger and how he hasn't really changed from when he was younger to now. So then you have three different elements really hammering home this one point, even though it's a bunch of different subjects. Those parts of the video that I put on the fourth line are parts that are gonna help me find those story points and find the direction of the documentary overall. And then we have the real bangers here on line five. Those are by far the best parts of the interview. Those are the parts that I'm going to find a way to get into this video in some kind of way the hardest hitting points. Maybe it's something I really wanted to be a part of this documentary. Those are the things on line five. Well-spoken, great topics, something that is really gonna help this story and just a really, 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 really great part of the interview. At the end of the day, that is going to help you a ton when you're going into a project and you already filmed it, but you're sitting there and you know you have an hour and a half 
worth of interviews. It's very overwhelming to sit down and know that you have to edit all of this footage, but this will help you at least bring it down a little bit. My next step is going to be put together a little bit of a timeline where the story starts to come together. Before I put together that timeline, something I've been liking to do, which I plan on making a whole video about this, is just make lists of how I can see the story going. All different kind of orders. Some of them will be chronological. Some of them will be hopping around more because I do find that once I lay down a timeline, I tend to get married to that and it's hard to even go a little bit away from it. So I write down the order. Then I start to get the structure with these interview pieces. But I always go through the interviews and all of the footage before I do anything at all. It gives you a gauge of what you have and what direction you can go. I hope that this helps you. My biggest reminder is label your footage. So at the very end, whenever you're looking at your timeline, you can easily see how many sound bites you have from the player versus the parent versus the coach or whatever your context is, and then make a bunch of different layers to separate your footage and know what sound bite is best. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps you. Subscribe if you're not already. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.